Hi everyone, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we finally wrapped up our discussion on series convergence tests. And so now it's time to take a step back and think about why we started that discussion in the first place. If you'll recall, our motivation came from Taylor series. Well, what's a Taylor series again? All oh, right. If you have a function f of x whose derivatives exist at a point x0, then we can talk about the Taylor polynomials of that function centered at x0. By considering Taylor polynomials of higher and higher and higher degree, we're essentially building up this infinite series, which we define as the Taylor series for f of x, centered at x0. Specifically, it's given by this infinite sum. It's made up of powers of x minus x0, and the coefficients are given by fn x0 divided by n factorial. If our Taylor series happens to be centered at 0, we'll often refer to this as the Maclaurin series for f of x. Now, we haven't really discussed Taylor and Maclaurin series since introducing these notions back in week 10. And the reason for this is that we very quickly ran into some weird problems when it came to convergence. These problems are actually what prompted our discussion on series convergence tests. So let me remind you what exactly we observed. Consider the function f of x equals cos x. I've graphed that function here in blue, as well as some of its Maclaurin polynomials in red. You can see that when we increase the degree of the Maclaurin polynomials, the approximation appears to get better, not only near x equals zero, the center of the approximation, but also at points farther away. For this example, we were actually able to show using Taylor's inequality that no matter where you're making the approximation, the error will tend to zero when you increase the degree of your Maclaurin polynomials. That is, the Maclaurin series for cos x will converge to cos x no matter what x value you choose. This, however, was not the case for some other nice functions. For an example where things don't work out so nicely, consider the function f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. I've graphed that function here in red, and some of its Maclaurin polynomials are shown in blue. Notice that the approximation is actually pretty good for x values between minus 1 and 1. When we increase the degree, the approximation at these points gets better and better and better. But for points bigger than 1 or less than minus 1, the approximation actually gets worse. You can see that if I measure the error between f of x and its Maclaurin polynomial at a point just bigger than 1, the error for p4 is actually less than the error for p8. Now this is a little unusual. At some points my approximation is getting better, at some points my approximation is getting worse. Said a little differently, at some points the Maclaurin series for this function is converging to f of x, and at some points the Maclaurin series is diverging. So in order to know where we can make approximations and where we can't, we need to figure out where the Maclaurin series will converge and where it will diverge. And now you can see this is where our series convergence tests are going to come in handy. Now although this question has been phrased in terms of Taylor and Maclaurin series, we can phrase it a little bit more generally in terms of what we call power series. A power series centered at x0 is just like a Taylor series. It's an infinite sum of powers of x minus x0, but the coefficients are just some numbers cn. The distinction here is that when it comes to Taylor series, we usually have a specific function f of x in mind from the start. The coefficients of our series are then given by the nth derivative of that function at x0 divided by n factorial. But here, we're not going to limit ourselves to just coefficients of that form. We're going to let cn be whatever you like. It's going to be some expression that looks like this. The question we'd like to answer is, where does such a series converge? And where does such a series diverge? To see how we might go about answering this question, consider the following example. For which values of x does this power series, the sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial, converge? Here we're actually being asked quite a bit. We're being asked to test the convergence of infinitely many series. Will this series converge if I plug in x equals 2? What about x equals 3? Or x equals 5? Or x equals minus 200 pi? Well, fortunately, we can test the convergence of all of these series at once using the ratio test. We'll just treat x like an arbitrary constant and apply the ratio test to this series. So let's write this down. We'll apply the ratio test. If I want to use the ratio test here, what do I have to calculate? 
Oh yeah, the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n. In this case, we're looking at the limit as n tends to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial divided by x to the n over n factorial. And all of this is in absolute value. Now don't get intimidated by this x in your limit calculation. Remember, we're treating x like an arbitrary constant. So we'll simplify this expression and evaluate the limit in the same way that we always do. We have the limit as n tends to infinity of the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 times n factorial divided by the absolute value of x to the n times n plus 1 factorial. Some cancellation occurs, and I'm left with the limit as n tends to infinity of the absolute value of x over n plus 1. Now notice that x here represents a constant, and it doesn't depend on the value of n. So I could actually pull x outside of this limit. I have the absolute value of x times the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1. Now this limit is equal to 0, right? And so if I multiply by any term, absolute value of x, it's still going to be 0. It doesn't really matter what x is. So what do we conclude here? Well, according to the calculation we've just done, no matter what x we started with up here, the limit from our ratio test is 0, which is in particular less than 1. So according to the ratio test, I can pick any x that I like up here. My limit is always going to be less than 1, and therefore my series will converge. So let's write this down. The series converges, and in fact converges absolutely, for all x in minus infinity to infinity. As a small but important remark before we move on to our next example, we've actually encountered this power series in the past. It's the Maclaurin series for f of x equals e to the x. According to what we've shown in example 1, this Maclaurin series will converge for all x in R. Now although we haven't shown this formally, it will be the case that the Maclaurin series converges to, you guessed it, e to the x. So we can say that for every x in R, e to the x is this infinite sum. Pretty cool, huh? Now if you wanted to prove this formally, you could do so using Taylor's inequality just like we did for cos x back in week 9. We're not going to work through all the details, however, and instead we're just going to accept this as fact. This equation will hold for all x. The following pictures at least back up our intuition. You can see e to the x is plotted in blue, and its first, second, and third degree Maclaurin polynomials in red. As the degree of the polynomial increases, the approximation is getting closer and closer to e to the x. Not just near x equals 0, but at points that are farther away as well. So maybe it seems believable that the Maclaurin series for this function really is converging to e to the x. Okay, to end this video I have one more example for you on convergence of power series. Consider the series shown here, the sum from 0 to infinity of n factorial x minus 2 to the n. The question is, for which x values will this series converge? Now we'll soon see some shortcuts for finding the x values where a power series converges, but until then we'll always approach these problems in the same way. We'll apply the ratio test. So let's write this down. We'll apply the ratio test. To apply the ratio test, we have to compute the limit as n tends to infinity of a n plus 1 divided by a n in absolute value. In this case, it looks like we get the limit as n tends to infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1 factorial x minus 2 to the n plus 1 divided by n factorial x minus 2 to the n. Just like before, we have some cancellation. We get the limit as n tends to infinity of n plus 1 times the absolute value of x minus 2. Okay, well check this out. When n goes off to infinity, n plus 1 is going to blow up to infinity as well. If I then multiply by a positive constant, the result will still be equal to infinity. Right? Yeah, almost. But there's one exception here. If we happen to plug in x equals 2, this expression will be equal to 0, and it will stop my limit from blowing up. It will be constantly 0. So we really have two possible outcomes here. The limit will be infinity if x is not equal to 2, and it will be 0 if x is equal to 2. So what can we conclude about the convergence of our series? Well, if x is not 2, the limit from my ratio test is infinity. It's bigger than 1. 
The series therefore diverges for these values of x. If instead x is 2, then the limit from my ratio test is equal to 0. It's less than 1, right? So according to the ratio test, this series will converge absolutely. So this is sort of the opposite extreme when compared with example 1. In example 1, the power series converged everywhere. Here, the power series converges only at its center, which isn't very useful. Most of the time, however, we aren't dealing with these extremes. The power series will converge on some interval and diverge outside that interval. When that's the case, there's a bit more work that needs to be done. This will be the topic of our next lesson.